morning. Good morning. This is a day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. We want to thank each of you for making your way out to the house of worship today. We want to thank those that are tuning in live via Facebook as we are preparing to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Our opening scripture this morning comes from the 121st number of Psalm. And the word of the Lord reads, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I've read the 121st number of Psalm. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Let us give the Lord a hand praise as we turn it over to the hands of the choir.
description. A scripture reading will be coming from Psalm 128. Psalm 128. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his way, for thou shalt eat the labor of thine hand. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be a fruitful vine by the side of thine house. Thy children, like olive plants, round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of thine, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace upon Israel. I read to you Psalms 20, 128 in its entirety. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. Let us bow here for prayer. This morning, our Heavenly Father, we come in the humblest way that we have been taught, Lord. We come thanking you. For all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do, Lord. Thank you for last night rest, Lord, and we thank you for this morning early rise. Realizing, Lord, it was nothing we did or nothing we could have done to guarantee our waking up this morning. It's because of your grace and your mercy that you have allowed our, us to live on for a little while longer. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. We Thank you for just blessing us throughout this week, Lord, you making it to our destination when we left home and then returning back home safely, Lord. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your deliverance, Lord. Lord, help us to realize that we can't do anything without you. If you didn't hold our hand, we would fall, Lord. Lord, we ask you to just continue to bless us as we journey through this land, realizing that this world is not our home. We're just strangers passing through. And as we pass through, Lord, we ask you to just continue to just bless us where we will walk where you would have us to walk. Bright our tongue where we'll do and say those things that are pleasing in your sight, Lord. Forgive us. For our sins, and they are many, Lord, those knowing and unknowingly, Lord. We ask that you just help us day by day, Lord. We realize, Lord, that sometimes things get a little hard on us, but nothing is too hard for our God. Nothing. We ask that you just Strengthen everyone here under the sound of my voice, those that are dealing with whatever situation they're dealing with, Lord. We know that something is going on in our lives, and you may not want to talk to your brother man about it, your fellow man, but talk to God. He can not only work it out, he can fix it because he's God. All by himself, he don't need to ask nobody what to do. He knows all and he sees all. Thank you, Lord. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? A God that knows the ending as well as the beginning. Lord, we ask a blessing upon the one that's going to preach your holy word, Lord. We ask you to just touch him. Bless him where he will preach boldly. Preach what thus said the Lord, Lord. And as he preached, Lord, bless us where we will receive it and go out and tell others what they must do, Lord. Lord, when we come to the end of our journey, Lord, we ask you just please give us a seat in our kingdom. For these prayers and blessings in your darling son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Page 289 in your hymn.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we have one announcement. The Black History Program will be at Anderson Grove Center on Saturday. I think it starts at 12. And the sneaker ball for the youth will be from 6 to 8, also at the Anderson Grove Community Center. Uh, youth here will get in for free. If you bring someone, please do. It will be a $10 donation. Come and support our youth. The prayer list, Pastor Benny Henry, <coughs> Brother Johnny Hunter, Sister Josephine Wash, Brother Joey and Ballard Barnes, Neshoba General Nursing Home, Brother James Bell, Sister Luella McGowan, the Moses family, Brother Curly B. Swope, the Lemons family, the Bells family, Brother Alan Martin, Brother Eddie and Rhonda Scott, Walmart 495, Staple Hills Bird and Davis family, Brother Tracy Pippins, Sister Shirley Hodges, the Dickerson family, Sister Lily Davis, Brother Rusty Freeman, Sister Ruth Tellis, Sister Emma Gallard, Brother Sammy and Linda Vassar, the sick and shut-in, Sister Alicia Gardner, Sister Geneva Bacon, Sister Tawanda Banks, Sister Janet Robinson, Sister Sandra Ruffin, Sister Shayla Henry, Brother Leroy Bronson for surgery, Sister Betty Hudson, Brother Tony Williams, and Sister Annie Spark, who's in the hospital. For bereavement, we have the Bob Calvert family, Leon Gardner family, Johnny Hampton family, Betty Jones family, John Howard family, and the Christopher family. Thank you. We have heard the announcements. Let us govern ourselves accordingly. And I ask that if you can pl stand, please stand with me as we go before the Lord in prayer, as we pray for those names that are on our sick and shut in list and not just for those that couldn't be with us today, for those, all of those that are here, those, all of those that are watching, for our nation's leaders, because this is the time when we, mu when we must pray. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, it's once again a few of your humble servants come before your throne of grace. Father, with no other purpose, no other plan, no other desire, but to give you the glory and the honor that is due unto you. God, we just say thank you right now. Thank you for being God and God all by yourself. Thank you for loving us enough to send your son Jesus to die on a rugged cross for the sins of the world. We thank you for raising him up on the third day. Father, we thank you for the comforter that was sent to us in the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for your living word. God, we ask now that you just forgive us of our many sins. If we've said or done anything that wasn't pleasing to you, God, we pray that you wash us in the blood of the Lamb, creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Father, we pray for those names that were called on the sick and the shut-in list. Father, we pray that you just touch them right now. Father, we know that you are a healer. We know that you are a heavy load bearer, a weight maker. God, we know that you can do all things but fail. So, Father, we just say thank you right now. Father, we just ask that you continue to touch our hearts and our minds. Let them be one in accordance with your word, your will, and your way. Not just this day, Heavenly Father, but every day that you allow us to see a brand new day. God, we ask now that you continue to just touch us. Father, let us be better doers and not just hearers only of your word. Father, that we can seek you and serve you, that we can worship you in the beauty of holiness. Father, we just pray and ask right now that you bless all of those that are underneath the sound of my voice. Father, whatever it is they stand in need of, God, we pray that if it is your will, that you would just touch, birth healing, give peace, deliverance, destroy yokes, Heavenly Father, set the captives free in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we know that we can do nothing without you. 
Father, but in your word, you said we can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthen us. So, Father, we just pray that you continue to just keep your loving hand upon us. Order our steps, O oh God. God, let us walk upright before you and before our fellow man. Father, we pray that you bless all of those that are watching on Facebook, Heavenly Father. God, just touch them, Heavenly Father, that if they're not able to make it out to the house today, God, when that time comes, they will enter into your courts with thanksgiving and praise. Because, Father, you are worthy and you are great and greatly to be praised. Father, we pray and ask that you bless the choirs. They sing the songs of Zion, O oh God. Let it be a sweet sound into your ears, Heavenly Father. Father, we pray that it ministers to our hearts, Father, so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we pray that you bless the man that is going to stand in John's shoes today, O oh God. Father, give him a word from on high. God, that if there are any that don't know you for the remission and pardon of their sins, they will cry out, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Father, we pray and ask that you bless the offering that is raised today, O oh God. Let it be used for the upbuilding and uplifting of your kingdom. Father, bless those that gave. Bless those that didn't have it to give, but had a desire to give, O oh God. Father, we pray right now that everything that is said and done will bring glory and honor to you. Father, as we give you the honor and praise, Father, for you are worthy. So we worship you and we say thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, let every heart say amen, amen, and amen.
in the sixth chapter of Isaiah, the model of to worship is revealed. There are three basic responses required of man. We have to acknowledge God is sovereign. We have to see ourselves as sinners. We have to accept the saving grace of God. And we must answer God's call to serve. And I heard the word from the prophet saying, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And hovering about him were six winged seraphim. With two wings, they covered their feet. With two wings, they covered their face. And with two wings, they did fly. And Isaiah said that his spirit shook the foundation of the earth. And so tonight, I challenge you to worship him in the beauty of holiness. Oh, come, let us worship him. Let's worship him. Turn to him, number 194. We've come a long way, Lord. We have come a long way. A flat. A flat. <laughs> Amen. Let us all stand and say together. Not in that. You need another addition. She need another addition there. <clears throat> We've come a long way, Lord. A mighty long way. We've come a long way.
a mighty long way. And he didn't bring us to leave us. Say, well, you go ahead and go the rest of the way. God will stay with us. Now, we may walk away from him, but he won't leave us. And I know this because I tried him for myself, and I know what he'll do. Amen. And I won't hold you long, brothers and sisters, uh, but I have a word. So I'm going to talk 20, 25 minutes, 35, 45 minutes. But I have a word today. If you have your Bibles, and I'm, you know, I'm reading from the King James Version, uh, turn to Colossians, first chapter. And again, I'm sorry to our pastor, I need to recognize our pastor. Uh, these other skilled scholars of Scripture, uh, they're wise and deacon, and they're wise, all that are here today. Amen. Colossians first chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. You find and you'll find these words, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and 
that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. And I'll stop right there. You may be seated. Just want to talk to you for a few minutes this morning. Take a look at Jesus and see God. Take a look at Jesus and see God. If someone asks you, who is Jesus, what would you say? What would I say? I thought about it. I heard someone put it this way, said if someone from a secular, secular society were to ask what's going on in there, what would you tell them? And if you say we're worshiping Jesus, uh, if they ask, well, who is Jesus? What would you tell them? Because some people say Jesus is just a prophet, but he's not the son of God. Some say that he, he's God, but he's just one of many gods because they worship many gods, several gods. But we know he's the only God, the only one in true and living God. Some say he's a good man, and that's about as far as they'll go. Some say a good teacher, but they say there's other ways to get to heaven. That's what some will say. But we know, those who know him, know that there's only one way to get to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. But I said that because that's what some people would tell somebody, those different things. Uh, but who do we say he is? Jesus even posed the question himself. He said, I know what they're saying, but who do you say I am? He said that we would be witnesses unto him, but if we don't know him, how can we be witnesses? We need to know him, and in order to do that, we've got to have a relationship with him. I, I don't think you'll be able to know him if you don't have a relationship with him. I don't think you'll be able to know him. No matter how much studying you do, if you hadn't confessed Jesus Christ, you might know some things and some historical fact, but you really won't know him. And I ponder the question is to why people who say they know Jesus, but they have no interest in him. It, it, it's, it's some that say they know him. But they very seldom talk about him. And as a matter of fact, before you can get finished with a sentence about Jesus, they done already walked away. Or you already done lost their attention. But they say that they know Jesus. Nonetheless. And I'm going to say this parenthetically, that some have no interest in even preaching him. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. It, it's some... They won't even preach Jesus Christ. It's more about entertainment, mm -hmm. more about a show, and more about themselves than it is preaching him. As Paul writes to the Colossians, his primary aim is to help them know who Jesus is and what position that he holds. Not, not that he holds, not that he held but he still holds. He wants them to know that Jesus is preeminent, that he is over all things, and that there is nothing above him. 
I don't care who you are or what position you may hold. There is nothing or no one above Jesus Christ. See, false teachers gave Jesus a, they gave him a prominent place, but they didn't give him a preeminent place. They, 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 they had the P right in the word, uh, but they didn't have the right word because he is preeminent. Uh, he's not just a great man among great men. He is the son of God. So, so you can't say, well, he's just a great man, but he's the son of God. Preeminent in all things. The word preeminent means the highest place. The highest place you can be. Another question then is he preeminent in our life. In other words, do we put him first in our life? Do we put him first in our decision making? I have to ask myself that sometimes. Am I putting self first or am I putting God first? I mean, I'm making him preeminent, which he is, because either he's going to be first or he's going to be Lord, not at all. But we know he is first. See, after a section of introduction from the first verse to the 14, Paul begins the main part of the letter with what many describe as a hymn of Christ. The first half describes Jesus and his position of preeminence over creation. The second half describes Jesus and his position of preeminence over the church. Just like false teachers back then, and that's what was going on. You still have false teachers today. Uh, you, you have people who are trying to use legalism and mysticism and philosophy trying to get to God. When the only way that you can get to him, you got to go by Jesus. Now, they, they try all other kinds of ways. Legalism, just like back then, and things still hadn't changed. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man will come to the Father but by me. So there's no algorithm or any kind of uh, uh, way you can figure it out. You got to go through Jesus. I heard it put this way, a, a theologian said, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he said, the way is a place between two places, to where you're leaving and where you're going. All right, come on now. Am I right about it? In this text, we get a description of who Jesus is. Yeah. The first thing I want you to know, brothers and sisters, is the revelation of his person. Because in verse 15, it says, who is the image of the invisible God? So you have here the meaning of an exact image of God in the word. You, you'll see words like uh, photograph and, and, and different stamp and different things like that when you do a little research on it. But he was the image of God, the invisible God. Jesus Christ is the exact image of the invisible God. Jesus says, if you see me. That's what the word says. You've seen the Father. The Father and I are one. That's what he said. In other words, brothers and sisters, don't let God be out of your mind because he's out of your sight. Am I right about it? You know they say out of sight, out of mind. Don't let him be out of your mind just because you can't physically see him. But I will tell you, he is real. I know he's real. As a matter of fact, he's here today. Am I right about it? You may not be able to see him, but oh, he's here. Oh, he's right up here. He's everywhere right now. Just because you don't see him don't mean he's not real. 
What's the song say? He's songwriter. He's real in my soul. Amen. That's why we are striving to walk by faith and not by sight. Some things we just got to trust God in. Uh, some things we just can't change. But trusting in the Lord with all our heart. And we need to walk by faith and not by sight. And brothers and sisters, I know I'm, I'm not a robot. I know that it's difficult. Amen. Amen. Because we got our senses, right? Uh, 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 we got our senses and, 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 and we want to use them. Uh, but when it comes to the spirit world, that's a whole nother realm than the five senses. When we talk about the spirit world. Remember when Jesus showed up in the, where the, all the doors was locked and everything. He showed up in Thomas. Well, how do you think he got in there when all the doors were locked up? See, in the spirit world, it's different. It's another realm than the five senses. I, I remember I had a platoon, so maybe some of you had a, a, a have a supervisor or manager, but I had some platoon sergeants, some first sergeants, commanders, and unfortunately, even some uh, chaplains that I gave them the respect that they were supposed to get, you know, whatever it was, attention or parade rest, whatever. But I knew that they were the type that wasn't going to do anything else. In other words, I didn't expect nothing from them <laughs> because they weren't in the line of trying to help anybody. But I gave them respect anyway, but I didn't expect anything from them. But I'm saying this because uh, just giving God the respect that he deserves, don't think that he is not active in our life. Because he is active in our lives. Uh, uh, he's just not in that position uh, of preeminence. But he is active in each and every one of our lives. I tell you of the life give a king that he's real. And he's active in our lives. I understand that some people don't sense the activity of Jesus in their lives. But I want to tell you, God is working for you. I remember, well, the other day, uh, I was out on Highway 45, and, and I was driving, and all of a sudden I heard this brakes being locked up. And the next thing I know, I see a truck, and he, it was like he was on ice. And he, I guess he was driving pretty fast because his truck was just sliding. And just at the last minute, I turned my wheel. And uh, we missed each other. My point is this, is that God is active in our life. Whether we want to recognize it or not. Uh, even those that don't believe in God. He, 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 he is so loving and so kind. That there is, as they say, some dangers that we did not see. That he kept. But he is active in our lives. But are we actively pursuing God? Are we seeking his counsel? Uh, sometimes, even myself, that we can let our circumstance govern what we do. We let it govern how we act. Uh, that's just human in us. We'll let it happen. In the, but trust in the Lord, and he'll work it out. Yes, now, verse 15 says not only that, uh, uh, and, and this is under uh, the revelation of his person. Uh, he's the image of the invisible God. But it also says he's the firstborn uh -huh. of every creature. Yes, sir. See, the firstborn, we know. In the Bible, it talks to those who are firstborn. You know, they they have a higher position. Those who are, but 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 
But this has nothing to do with chronological order. Uh, 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 chronology is not even in this right here. It has nothing to do refer to time. It just means simply the position of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. The firstborn uh, does not refer to time. And it's not chronological. Remember when, when Paul had uh, experienced Jesus on Damascus Road mm -hmm. and and I thought about it. Remember back then, as uh, Saul of Tarsus, he believed that Jesus was nothing more than a deliberate blasphemer. Mm -hmm. And then came to experience Jesus on Damascus Road. Right. And there, in the dust of the road, and surrounded by the blinding light yeah. of glory, he said, Who art thou, Lord? But right here, he gives a description of who Jesus is. Now he's given a description. In other words, when you meet Jesus Christ, oh, you'll never forget the day that you met him. Now, you might not remember the exact time or whatever, but that's just humanly because of us. But you'll know that you met him whenever it was that you met him. Secondly, brothers and sisters, look at the revelation of his power. Said, verse 16 and 17 don't overlook the letter, the, the three-letter word for in this, because in verse 16, it's a synonym for the word because. See, Paul is telling the Colossians that Jesus is supreme over all creation because it was all created through him and for him. The invisible things of earth and unseen things of spiritual realm. The 17th verse said, and he before all things, and by him all things consist. Consist meaning hold it together. Yes, sir. Not only did he create it, uh -huh. but he holds it together. Yeah, you, you realize that this earth is turning, and all of these planets and everything else, somebody got to be holding it together. Uh, 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 there's galaxies that we had never even seen yet, but yet God is holding it together. He created it and he consists it. He holds it together. The word consist means to hold together or make or stand. So he's allowing everything to stand. Uh, 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 if he wanted to, he could flatten it off. But he's consistent, he's holding it together. I read a story of, a, it was a tour guide that uh, was giving a tour to a, through an atomic laboratory. And the tour guide was explaining how all matter was uh, composed of rapidly moving electrical particles and all of this sent different things. And the, uh, the tourist uh, studied the model molecules and was amazed to learn the matter is made up of primarily space. But then there was a session where they allowed people to ask questions. And one of the visitors said, if this is the, the way matter works, what holds it together? And the tour guide had no answer for it. But we just learned right here that the Lord uh -huh. holds it all together. Yeah. See, there's some things in academic books that you just can't find. Uh -huh. There's some things you just can't get an answer from in Google. I know Google, we can find just about anything. Uh -huh. But 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 there are some things you just can't get an answer from uh, an academic book. Right. You got to go to the good book right. in order to get your answer. Amen. Not only is everything made by him and for him, he holds it together. In my last point, the revelation of his position. It said, and he is the head of the body, the church. Several times in Paul's letter, he refers to the church using the metaphor of a body. Jesus is the head, and we are the different parts of the body. Like parts of a body, we, we have different roles. But we are interconnected yes, sir. and dependent on each other. Yes, 
and are all under the authority of Christ, who is our head and our king. I heard it put this way, if God made me a big toe in a sock, that's his purpose for me. Wherever he put me there, then I need to do what he wants me to do. There's no lead. He didn't mean looking for uh, uh, to elevate, I guess, to another position if I'm not going to do where he put me at. So why would he do it? See, I have inventory of myself, and I hope you do it as well. Sometimes I ask, do I have an excellent spirit that Daniel had? We talked about that this morning. And, and the excellent spirit allowed him to get a promotion. It allowed him to be exalted because he had an excellent spirit. And when you have, you use the word excellent, you can't go no higher than excellent. If there's a word, I don't know of one, but he had an excellent spirit. And oftentimes I wonder, do I have an excellent spirit then, or do I have a sometime spirit? It, 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 am I sometime? Am I doing what I should do? Is it excellent today or is it excellent tomorrow? Or, or, or am I sometime? But then I know that I have some things to work on that we all do uh, 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 to get an excellent spirit. And then we need to ask ourselves, what is our spirit doing for us? Uh, 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 some looking for a promotion, <laughs> but they don't have an excellent spirit. Uh, we need to work on it. Uh, just like the false teachers, people then, you have uh, 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 many who are doing the same thing that was going on back then. Uh, I started from verse 15, but when I studied this text, I took a running start. And I started at verse 14. And what I like about verse 14, it reminds me that he forgives us of our sins. Uh, uh, he's a forgiving God. That he forgives us of our sins. 103rd number of songs said that he had not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarding us according to our iniquities. Uh, verse 12 from that says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed my transgression from us. Isaiah 38 and 17. He has taken my sins and cast them behind his back. Colossians 2 and 14. He took my sins out to a hill called Calvary. And while he was there, he hung there for every one of us. Because we couldn't save ourselves. See, Jesus came at the age of 20. I mean, at the age of 12. And they took him, and they put him between two thieves. But while he was hanging there from the sixth to the ninth hour, the world got dark. It began to rock and shake like a drunken man. Because of that loss, it stabilized. But he said, no man will take my life, but I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I'll pick it up again. And they took him down, and they put him in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day morning, Jesus rose up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. I want to ask you this morning, are you looking at Jesus? Because if you want to know about God, then all you got to do is look at Jesus. See, we were made in God's image. But Jesus is God. He's the perfect image of God. Amen. He is worthy to be praised. Sometimes we try to show our strength, but he said he would demonstrate himself in our weakness. But I want to ask you this morning, do you know Jesus? Do you know him in the part of your sins? If you don't know him, you can come to know him today. Uh, you come by letter, candidate, baptism or Christian experience or maybe if you're out of fellowship but you can come today and that Jesus is standing with open arms and he's waiting 
You can come.
Amen. We, we thank God for the presence of his spirit in this worship service today. <clears throat> Amen. He was here when we got here. <laughs> he manifests himself since we've been here. Amen. Jay, you back where you belong. Amen. I tell you what, prayer, prayer will win. John and May used to sing that. Sometimes I feel discouraged and my struggle seem all in vain. Y'all know it. You know that? I fall down on my knees and I go to God in secret prayer. Sometimes my way get hard. Jesus is my God. That's why I know. Yes, I know. Prayer will win. Yes, it will. Oh, I know. Yes, I know. I know. Yes, I know. Oh, you can call him no more. Call him. Nah, nah. He'll be there. He'll make That's why I know that prayer show will win. Church, I know, I know Oh, I know, I know Yes, I know That's what I want you to do Then what? You can call him Call G Call him Call him. Just call. Late in the midnight hour. Early in the morning. When your burdens get heavy. Call Jesus. When your friends get to you. Just call.
are going to have practice for the Black History Program immediately after service. A reminder about the adult portion of our Black History Program will be this morning after service. I want to thank Reverend Porter for the message. And I just want to remind us that we are Sometimey Christians. Sometimes we want to do what the words say, and we don't. Sometimes we don't want to do it, and we do it. So in that message, he let us know that it is Jesus that's holding us together, not our sometimey self. He is ever present. That's what he told us in the message. Yeah, ever present. Thank God for the message. I'm going to give the benediction, and then we're going to go off and go into our black history. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together in your name once again. Thank you, Father, for the prayers that have been lifted for the song of praises that have been sang. We thank you for allowing us to gather together once again in your name. On this side, before you've called us into eternity, we ask, Father, as we depart, that you keep us safe until we meet again. Lord, we know only you Or our pilots. You are our driver and we are educators learning how to drive. Thank you for keeping us. Until we meet again, we say amen. Amen. And amen. Oh, God. Till we meet, till we meet.